Tonight, we're going to look at uh, something that's near and dear to my heart, uh, personal outreach. And uh, I've titled this, Continuing the Conversation. For some of you, you might not have ever shared your faith with anyone. So for you, it'll be beginning the conversation. But that's okay. Uh, about 20 years ago, uh, I had a friend who went to, to this church. And we used to hang out. And uh, we played sports together and all that good stuff. And I was not a Christian. I was not attending a church. Um, I had given up on the church that I had grew up in. And so... I had really drifted away from any sort of faith whatsoever in Jesus Christ. And uh, with this friendship through sports and all the rest of that stuff, this 14-year-old uh, kid had the guts to actually talk to me about Jesus and actually uh, share his faith with me. And It'd be nice to tell you that it was uh, a, a smooth ride, and he, he led me in the sinner's prayer, and there was an organ playing in the background, playing just as I am, and all the rest of that. But it, it didn't it didn't work quite work out like that. Through this friendship, I started working on the parking lot here in this church, so I got to hang out with a lot of Christians, um, and each one in turn shared a little bit of their faith with me, sometimes with words. And sometimes not. Uh, if you spend a lot of time with me, you'll find out that one of my favorite sayings uh, comes from uh, a Catholic monk by the name of uh, Francis of Assisi. He said this, At all times preach the gospel, and if necessary, use words. And uh, through a lot of people, with words and without, shared their faith in Christ with me. And there was no youth in the summer, so I wasn't going to youth started youth in the fall, and in the room almost directly below us, in the, the old fellowship hall, the prayer room, or whatever it's called now, is where we had youth. And uh, it was a small group of 25 that exploded to a group of about 120. Um, and I was there in its, it, its infancy stages, and uh, I kept coming week after week. Still hadn't made a confession for Jesus. But I was here. And the youth pastor would be preaching about my favorite bands, and I didn't quite like that. But I still came. I still came. And then a week after my 19th birthday, some of you are doing math. For those of you who weren't at retreat last week, you could actually finally figure out how old I am. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the same age as Rich, in, in case you're wondering. Uh, I'm actually two months older than he is. But nonetheless, Rich is 41. Oh, you gave it away. After my 19th birthday, I actually bowed my knee to Jesus Christ. All because of a 14 year old kid who shared his faith with me. All because of Christians who were in my life were sharing their faith with me. And I want to encourage you tonight that you can be that voice in a friend's life. That's good. You can be that voice. So we're going to turn to a story that some of you have probably never heard. And anybody got a Bible here besides me? Acts chapter 17. Mm -hmm. I encourage you to bring your Bibles. I encourage you to read your Bibles at home. I encourage you to take a pen to your Bibles and start marking them up, underlining stuff, writing notes in the margins, asking questions in the margins, stuff you don't understand. Um, I encourage you to do all of that good stuff because that's how you learn. We'll get into more of that actually tonight. So, here we go. I'm getting ahead of myself. Acts chapter 17, starting in verse 16. For those of you who have the Bible, for those of you who don't, 
Stay tuned. Now, while Paul was waiting for uh, the other uh, apostles in Athens, he set, uh, uh, his, his spirit was provoked within him as he, saw that city, as he saw that the city was full of idols. I'll stop there for a second to, to explain something here. Uh, some of your translations, if you read this, will say, Paul was angry. Paul got angry. He was ticked off because all he saw in this town was idols. An idol here, an idol there statues to whatever gods were actually present, and there were a lot of them. <laughs> Verse 17, so he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons uh, in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Uh, some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also, con also conversed with him, and some said, what does this babbler wish to say? Others said, he seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities, foreign gods, because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the, um, the, air, the, 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 the Mars Hill, <laughs> well the, uh, the the air, the, 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 the let's just say, let's just, let's just say Areopagus. Areogos, whatever. Areopagus. There it is. Saying, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting. For you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish, we wish to know, therefore, what these mean. Now all the Athenians and foreigners who lived there would, would, would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. So Paul, standing in the midst of Mars Hill, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I, pa for as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as, as, he, as, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives all to mankind life and breath and everything. And he made, and he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined uh, allotted, period, allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and hope that they might feel their way, that they might feel their way toward Him and find Him. Yet He is actually not far from each one of us, for in Him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to, we, we ought not to think that the, that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the heart and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he, com but now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he appointed and of his and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead now when they heard of this resurrection all uh, when they heard of this resurrection of the dead some mocked but others said we will hear you again on this. So Paul went from their midst. But some, uh, but, uh, uh, but some men joined him and believed. Other, uh, and believed, among whom were Dionysus and uh, all these other people. <laughs> okay, what are we going to do with this story? What are we going to do with this story? Paul reasoned in the synagogues with both Jews and 
um, as the NIV says, God-fearing Greeks, people of like mind, people who believed in one God instead of the multitude that the Romans had, uh, and who actually uh, believed and started practicing some of the Jewish customs. He started reasoning with these people. His audience was somewhat religious. And this sparked interest in the thinkers around, people who have nothing else better to do but then to talk about something new, the philosophers. And they would just think about stuff all day long, and they caught his, they caught, they, their ears were caught by what Paul was saying. <coughs> And so Paul presents to them, hey, I walked around and I saw these idols and I saw this one inscription to this unknown God. Now what you claim to be, what you say is unknown, let me tell you, he is knowable. He is seekable. And you can find him. And he wishes to be found. He is reachable. And then he goes on to say, in him we live and move and have our own very, our very existence is tied up in this unknown God who is actually noble. And then he starts talking about the resurrection of Jesus. God sent his, he's, he's explaining the whole gospel to them, right? God sent his son to us so that he would die on a cross for us. But he didn't leave him dead. He rose him up from the grave. And this tickled more ears. Resurrection? This is new to us. I need to hear more. And so they were intrigued. And so they, they brought him back. And then some eventually believed. I'm going to give you, I'm going to talk about six things tonight. Six things tonight. And, and and then we can either discuss them in question and answer period if you have questions. Or you can chew on it and meditate on it more at home as you go back through this text. But six, six lessons from this text, if you will. Number one, take time to learn more and go deeper in your relationship with Jesus. Some of your faith is very strong. Others, not so much. It's still in the infancy stage. That's okay. We've all been there. Just don't stay there. Take the time to go deeper. Take the time to learn more about Jesus. How do you do that? But Rich told us this last week. Get into the Bible. Why? Because the Bible is about Jesus. From the Old Testament to the New Testament. The Bible is about Jesus. The Old Testament points to Jesus in the future. The New Testament talks about Jesus in the present. Learn the scriptures. Learn about Jesus. Because it is Jesus that you are sharing with people. Or should be sharing with people. Number two. Start or continue your conversation with others about your faith. That's a biggie. I wouldn't be here if somebody didn't share their faith with me. I probably, well, let's not, let's not go there. Uh, I was on a path quickly to nowhere in my late teens, and I would probably still be there or on my way. Uh, take the time to share your faith with others. You may be the only Jesus that people will ever see. Number three, look for creative ways to include current cultural icons to spark or illustrate what it is you are trying to say. I may be the first youth guy to tell you this, but it may not be a bad thing to listen to secular music. It may not be a bad thing to occasionally watch a film. 
Mm-hmm. This is not a Sunday sermon. What? <laughs> what is a philosophy? <laughs> you heard this man. It's okay to look for things in culture that actually point to Jesus. It's not really current, but I think one of the, and you can stone me for saying this later, but I think one of the greatest allegories of Jesus is the film E.T. If you've never seen E.T., rent it. Just came out on Blu-ray. It's, the, the image is really crisp. It's a two-hour movie. It feels like it's five. It's, it's a two-hour movie, and I kid you not, when it, when it used to air on TV, for a half an hour afterwards, there would be testimonials of how E.T. changed these people's lives. I know it's crazy. <laughs> Narnia is closer to the... Uh... Well, let's... Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree, Narnia is closer. It's literal. It was, it was written by it's and I dare say there's lots in Harry Potter that might be. But. but look for creative ways in, 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 in current culture. There's lots of music out there that, that points to Jesus that aren't done by Christian artists. Yeah, is it in Hi. Number four. Number four. Building bridges is better than burning them. I repeat. Building bridges is better than burning them. When preaching the good news of Jesus, avoid the judgment of other religions and or atheists. Burning stuff is fine. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I'm connected to a lot of people online all over the world. Uh, sometimes courtesy of soccer, and sometimes these people just found me on Twitter and started following me, uh, and or Facebook. And through some of these uh, friendships and followings and whatever it is that you want to call them, uh, I've talked about Jesus with them. A lot of them are Muslims. Some of them are Hindus. It wouldn't go over very well if I said, Allah is a false god. And uh, build bridges. Look for points of commonality to talk with these people if you ever encounter them. Jehovah's Witnesses are fun. <laughs> I invite them in. They usually leave running. But. Uh, I invite them in. I, I allow them to give their little three-minute speech that they have, provided that they let me talk to them. And, yeah, the Greek Bible sometimes comes out. And we, we, we have a chat about John 1-1 and a few other things that they like to change in their translation to sort of fit their, their doctrine. Uh, sometimes they come back... <coughs> Often they don't. But I do get, they, get they, they deserve to hear the truth too. Um, build bridges. Build bridges. Number five. Don't be afraid uh, that some may not like your story. They won't. I guarantee it. But others will be drawn in and ask for more. Uh, when I first heard of the when I first heard the gospel, I wasn't completely re- receptive. But I didn't run away from my friends and, and and not ever show my face again in their house. Right? I started working in a church parking lot with them, of all things. Hard labor in the summer. I had nothing else better to do, so that's where I was. People may not like your story, but some people will be drawn in, they'll ask more questions, and they'll allow you to speak more into their life, and things will be good, and eventually, could be months down the road, could could be years down the road, 
eventually, uh, who knows, they could actually be drawn by the Spirit and become a believer and bow their knee to Jesus and ask for forgiveness. All that good stuff. Some may not like your story, but others will, and they'll be drawn in and ask for more. Number six, and with this I close. Continue the conversation and encourage others to go deeper with you. Continue the conversation and encourage others to go deeper with you. The great commission that Jesus gave in Matthew 28 said, go into the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. Uh, he, he said make disciples. He didn't say make converts. And so people may actually be one of your disciples and not have faith. As I believe true discipleship begins before you become a Christian. And I believe that everyone in this room is a disciple maker. Some of you might be better at it than others. But you've got people who follow you. You've got people who listen to you. You've got people that you have the right to speak into their life. It's up to us to make disciples of Jesus with the help of the Spirit. We need to encourage those that are following after us to go deeper with us. We need to walk with them. We need to teach them. It's not all Pastor Steve's job. It's not all my job. It's not all, it's not all Jessica's job. The job falls on each one of us because we're all ministers. Even if you don't have the title pastor, you're still a minister. Let's pray. Father, Jesus, I thank you uh, for for each person in this room tonight, God. I thank you that many of them, if not all of them, have, have started a faith journey with you. Father, I pray that as they learn and as they go deeper, that they would have the guts to tell others about you. Father, that they would reach their friends and... Uh, and impact them with their lives and with the gospel. Father, we pray for, for, for a spirit of boldness and a spirit of power upon them. We pray that the Holy Spirit would go before us and prepare the hearts of those who would be in our paths day after day. Father, help us to be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray. Matt? Yeah. Questions, comments? <laughs> Rude innuendos.